Stop right now and think about what you are doing. You are staring at your screen, attending your virtual communications class, and the majority of you are living at home. This is because we've been forced into attending all online classes and have not been able to experience normal college life. Instead of online classes, we should be on campus experiencing our first year as college students. As a student myself, I've been taking virtual classes since March, and not only have I personally felt the effects of virtual learning, but I've also done ample research on the effects of virtual learning on students of all ages and from all over the country. The virtual learning programs that students across the country are taking right now have had detrimental effects on their health, their learning, and their overall livelihood. And I think the only adequate solution to fixing this is to let students go back to attending in-person classes. In my speech, I will explain the psychological and physical effects of virtual learning, the barriers preventing in-person classes from resuming, as well as the actions that we can take to ensure students can resume in a traditional setting. Virtual learning has had a negative effect on students both mentally and physically, and these issues are likely to have long-term implications as well. The biggest consequence of online school has been the imp impact of mental health on, on students. With teenagers and young adults already being at high risk of mental health struggles, online learning has exasperated these problems. Stress, anxiety, depression, and suicide have all hit record high numbers, which is extremely worrying. Due to the increased pressure placed on students while learning from home, as well as messed up sleep schedules, increased screen time, as well as being isolated from necessary interactions, students have been in instrumentally impacted. In a study performed on the effect of online schooling on college students' mental health, it was found that 71% of college students experienced an increase in stress and anxiety for, during the coronavirus and online schooling. This exemplifies the urgent need for students to be given the resources to help fix this awful trend of mental illness, and this includes being able to attend in-person classes. Online instruction also creates a more difficult way for teachers to engage with their students, and therefore students are not receiving the same level of education. First off, there are many different ways that students can learn best, and virtual learning eliminates the chances for kinesthetic learners to thrive. Kinesthetic learners learn best when they're doing hands-on activities and they comprehend material best by doing things. Because online classes are composed mostly of auditory and visual material, many students have a much harder time staying focused and being able to grasp concepts. In a survey of parents conducted by Education Next in May of 2020, they found that 71% of parents feel that their child learned less online than in person. This proves how virtual learning has had a drastic effect on students' education. Next, for classes such as labs, online learning is simply ineffective. Without being able to experience using pipettes, measuring substances, and physically doing experiments, lab students are not gonna be prepared for future higher level labs. And this is gonna have a long-term effect on them. Having school in person is also important for the physical well-being of children and teenagers. For students who experience abuse or who have family members that struggle with addiction, school is often their only escape from these harsh living conditions. Because the pandemic has forced families to be at home more, the rate of domestic violence has skyrocketed. And with virtual learning, students are not provided with the adequate resources to escape these conditions. Henrietta Ford, the executive director of UNICEF, said lockdowns, school closures, and movement restrictions have left far too many children with their abusers without the safe space that they need and that school would normally offer. For students of all ages in school, the relationships with teachers and peers have proven to be extremely crucial, not only for their mental health, but their overall wellness. Now let's look at the causes for online school to be taking place in the first place. The reason for online school began with the health pandemic and has now been left up to various authorities to decide when schools can be resumed in person. Since January 12, 2020, there have been a total of 9,581,000 770 cases plus more in the United States alone. Beginning in March, this virus has become a major threat to people all, all over the world to the point where schools had to shut down. Now, however, after seven months of research and testing on the virus, it can be seen to have little effect on children, teens, and young adults. With cautious procedures in schools, social distancing and sanitizing can be achieved and schools can, be, can reopen with a low risk of outbreaks among the students. Although online learning protects the vulnerable from contracting the virus, the majority of students have now been faced with extremely high rates of mental illness, suicide, and decreased quality of education. Now that the research has been done on the virus and is better know, known who it affects, the bigger barrier 
is the various authorities that control the state, counties, and school systems themselves. With various mandates set in place, major counties have been put under strict watch, and the majority of schools are unable to open in-person classes. From Newsom all the way down to the heads of each school, there are many authorities who have become barriers in the movement to getting in-person classes started again. One more major obstacle to getting schools reopened is the lack of social distancing. At colleges across the country, parties have become a huge source of outbreaks of the coronavirus. This has prevented schools from reopening because of the large number of positive cases within the student body. As much as the schools can attempt to regulate big gatherings, it's the student's responsibility to be careful and prevent the spread of the coronavirus. By addressing the barriers that currently prevent in-person learning from being able to occur, the, student, the solutions to this issue can be determined. Contacting the proper authorities and actively taking a stance to get schools back in person are what is really needed to, get, to make a difference. There are many petitions that can be signed that can help fight against online learning. Go to change.org to find petitions that can be signed to advocate for the reopening of schools. These petitions range from addressing the governor's actions to petitioning to our very own president of SDSU, Adela De La Torre, to allow safe re return to school. The next action that can be taken is to directly contact the administrators or authorities who are keeping online schools. The chancellor of the CSU system itself, Chancellor Timothy P. White, can be contacted by calling 562-951-4000. If you call this number and leave a message stating the importance of returning to school and how it's a necessity for the well-being of students all over the state, they will better be able to understand the struggles that we are going through. Furthermore, following the rules and minimizing the number of infected people is one step that can directly cause a decline in coronavirus cases. I'm not saying at all to quarantine and cut yourself off from social interactions, but instead just be mindful of the gatherings that you attend and the risks that they may pose. Online schooling has had an extremely negative effect on students of all ages and in-person classes provide opportunities and resources that online classes simply cannot provide for students. The mental and physical health of students has declined rapidly over the period of time when classes have been online. Not only has the, corona, the coronavirus caused a pandemic, but a whole new mental health crisis has been caused by the lack of in-person learning. Although many barriers currently exist that prevent schools from reopening, the proper safety measures can be put in place that can allow students to go back to school. By contacting the proper authorities and being mindful of your exposure, schools are most likely able to recognize that students have had a huge impact because of this. So remember that next time you are thinking about going to a huge state party, just remember that not going to this party could be one step that you can take that can help us go back to school and have a normal life. Thank you.